This week at Love in a Row, we're talking about family. I'm Adam Fallon, and as always, we're here with J.D. Buckner. And J.D., I'm glad you chose a nice, narrow topic for us to talk about in, you know, five to ten minutes. Oh, yeah. You know I love the narrow topics. <laughs> Music, family, yeah. prayer. Yeah, family. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we can fully cover this topic in the next, oh, eight minutes, something like that. But you, you said when we were talking about this that you had sort of a specific thing you want to talk about with family, so I'm going to just say, here you go. Here's your time. Okay. Well... Uh, when we think about family, I guess the encouragement for our video t this week is to uh, focus on our family, concentrate on it, and really value and treasure it, and particularly invest in family. Well, the Bible tells us a lot about family through the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, specifically, I'm reminded of Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6, where Ephesians 5, we don't normally think of that as a family passage, but when you're talking about husband and wife, uh, Paul is using the example of husband and wife to talk about the church, but uh, that's really the beginning of family. Um, there's There it talks about how a man ought to treat his wife and how a wife ought to treat his his uh, her excuse me husband that's a different video uh, yeah <laughs> sorry how a man ought to treat his wife and how a woman ought to treat her husband and if you can start that as the foundation of family then that goes into the next chapter where it talks about children and how children ought to respect their parents and specifically how fathers ought to treat their children not provoking them to wrath but focusing on uh, bringing them up in the Lord. There's just no substitution for family in the world. No. Uh, when over the last decade, there's been a lot of studies done among uh, youth ministries and things like that on uh, why children stay faithful, why children don't stay faithful, what are some causes, and some things like that. And one of the number one things that they've discovered is the power of the family. Family is key in keeping people faithful. And, you know, science and statistics and surveys are catching up with that, but the Bible has shown us that all along. Family is powerful. It is necessary. We ought to invest in it. Yeah, that's right. And one of the things that I think we can get so caught up in is the verses you mentioned from the end of Ephesians 5, the beginning of Ephesians 6, they remind us, you know, it is one man for one wife. They remind us that, you know, fathers are not to provoke their children to wrath and some of these specific things. But then we sometimes don't take it the step further. I'm not talking about going beyond Scripture, but we sometimes don't take it the step further and say, how does that actually play out in my life? We say, well, my kids aren't mad today, so I must, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, okay, that's sort of what Paul was talking about. But, but those things need to be, like you said, I love the word investing in our family. Mm -hmm. It is a constant thing where... How did I do today as, as a father, as a husband, or as a wife? How did I do compared with God's standard? And the great thing about the Bible, I, I love it in a lot of ways, but especially as it pertains to family, is God gives the superstructure, I guess is the, the best word I can think of, but he gives it in such a way that in America in 2013, I don't have to do the exact same things that a father 600 years ago in Europe did, mm -hmm. but both of us can be faithful fathers. That's a great point. It, it applies to all generations and all ethnic groups, all cultures, uh, these, these notions of a man and a woman being married, having children, and within that family unit, drawing that family unit closer to God. I'm glad you mentioned that because even in the Old Testament, I'm thinking about when uh, God told His people that the, they should have things in their household so that when the children ask what is that it's an opportunity to tell a story yeah. of the history of God and that they should have the writings of it so when the children ask and they're always taking opportunities to tell the history of God and training their children up in the way that they should go so that's a really good point yeah it was it was constant yeah every time I hear that I think about the uh, the stones that were set up when they entered the promised land. And the, the reason why, it wasn't, it wasn't to make a pretty structure, it was 12 rocks. I mean, yeah. it couldn't have been that good looking of a structure. Right. <laughs> but the reason it was given was when children, when your children in time to come ask, what do these stones mean? And it's several verses that Joshua says, you tell them this and this and this, and it, it's just phenomenal. But we don't have to set up stones now. Right. But 
as you mentioned, there are times in our lives where we can make sure there is, you know, that old phrase, a teachable moment. You know, just happen to be where something's happening or just happen to make sure on the way home from worship you mention the Lord's Supper or the mm -hmm. Bible class or something. Mm -hmm. To have those moments where God is constantly a part of our homes. But it's not just for those of us who have children. You know, the, the first part of Ephesians you mentioned there in chapter 5, husbands and wives, for those families that don't have children, God still desires for that home to be centered in Him. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. And so when we think about family, I love that you wanted to do this, even though we kind of kidded around about, you know, the broadest topic. I don't know how many books I have in my library you know, at the house and, and here that deal with family. It's quite a few. Yeah. And we just talked about them all in about five and a half minutes. So I'm going to throw all those books away <laughs> oh, yeah. and just watch this video a That's few times. That's an excellent idea. <laughs> But in all seriousness, we, we love family and God loves family. But God expects us not just to say, okay, I checked off today because I love my wife today. Well, how am I going to love her tomorrow? Mm -hmm. It is a constant investment, a constant work to make sure that, that my wife, my husband, my children, whatever it happens to be in that home, are faithful to God and are, frankly, enjoying that day. I liked what you said also about the teachable moment. And that kind of went back to what you said at the beginning about when we invest in our families, in order to have teachable moments, uh, whether it be among man and wife or uh, parents and children, in order to have those moments, you have to be there for those moments. So taking time for your family, once again, is reiterated as important. Uh, you can't find opportunities to talk about God in the Bible if you're not there when those opportunities arise. Yeah, that's very, very true, very well said. And it doesn't have to be in the home. It can be in the car. It can be, you know, on the ball field or wherever. But just being there makes all the difference. You know, the old statement is children spell love, T-I-M-E. Yeah. I don't think it's just children that spell it that way. Yeah. You know, I think anybody, when someone spends time with them, it just shows they care, shows they love. Just a, a couple of announcements before we finish off here for, for our Lebanon Road folks. One is that this coming Sunday there will be a service at uh, Heartland uh, Towers, and the youth group is, is in charge this, this month, and so that will be at 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Hope not just the youth group, but several folks will go and worship with those uh, good folks there. Also want to mention that... Uh, well, I'll just peel back the curtain. We're recording this a couple of days early because you and uh, Brother Wayne Davidson are headed to... Uh, South Carolina. That's right. I totally Lexington. blanked out there for a second. Yeah. Lexington, South Carolina, to uh, to sort of scout out the the area that the mission trip will be uh, happening this particular summer. And and uh, I know every time you all go and do those sort of scouting trips, a lot of good things happen and get the ball rolling. And so we want our folks to be praying for you all while you're gone, but also for the the mission trip and the planning that will take place when you all get back from uh, from that trip. And I want to just make one other mention here. We are starting to get somewhat close to Vacation Bible School, and uh, we're starting to put uh, the staff together and all of our members filled out their work forms, and if you filled out that you wanted to, to teach or be an aide at VBS, just expect a, a phone call or an email in the coming days. We're starting to put the staff together, it's starting to come together, but uh, we haven't forgotten about you. We just want to make sure that you know that that call or email is coming, and we'll be putting that staff together. Hopefully within about two weeks we'll have that all in, in place, and just want to let you know that and be praying for our Vacation Bible School to be happening in June. Anything else you want to say before we sign off this week? I don't think so. Good answer. <laughs> Until next time, this is This Week at Lebanon Road.